While the Battle of the Titans is going to be happening for the realm of about 1% of gamers with the 4090 and 4080 versus whatever is going to come out of AMD's RDNA 3 camp, the real war is happening between Intel Arc, Radeon 6000, and NVIDIA 3060 series cards. I know a lot of focus these past few months has really been on the RTX 4090 and 4080 10 gig. <laughs> Sorry, I mean 4070. Pretty much everyone is just dying to see what is going to be coming out of the AMD camp with the RDNA 3.0 announcement on November 3rd. But for all of the hoopla about cards that are in that $600 to $2,000 range, let's be honest, most of you watching this video aren't going to be buying one of those cards. And if you look at the Steam hardware breakdown, most folks are still using the most budget conscious 3060, 3060 Ti, and 6600 XT, and 6650 XT GPUs. To be honest, you're all using 2060s and 1660s, but point being is when we talk about the newer gen cards, those are the most popular. So why hasn't there been a ton of focus on these cards then? Well, because to be honest, we are still months, if not more away in terms of any announcement from either Team Red or Team Green on the replacements of these cards in the form of the 4060, the 4060 Ti, or is that the 4070 and 40? <laughs> anyway, what this means is going into the holiday season and with GPU prices being what they are, people have quality choices at this price point and have all the data they kind of need for reviews, etc., to make a pretty good decision on which card to get. Well, okay, that's not quite true because we do have a disruption. If, if that's the right word for it, a long overdue and dragged out disruption, which funny enough isn't quite the joke everyone thought it would be. And that is the new GPU from Intel, the Intel Arc. Now, if you haven't been paying attention or frankly you just believe the rumor that Intel announced and then abandoned the Intel Arc, let me kind of give you a refresher. See, Intel Arc is a whole new graphics card entry for both laptops and desktops. On the desktop side are the ones we will be focusing on today for this video, along with NVIDIA and AMD. And that's the A7 series of what they are calling their high performance gaming GPUs. Now, now don't, don't let that name fool you. Intel has never meant for the Arc GPUs to compete with the likes of like the 3080 or the 6800, but more of those majority stake of GPU sales in that 250 to $350 range. You know, the affordable, everyday people type of GPUs. Now details, performance, and even price have been sparse since they first announced the whole thing back in April of 2021. But in the past two or three months, we started to finally get a, a trickle of information that started with how the card looked, with a video series from moi driving a crazy Intel Arc van, and then all the way to performance benchmarks and finally the launch date, which happened at the Intel's innovation announcement, along with the announce of the 13th gen Intel CPUs. Well, today we're gonna stack up the three GPU families, AMD, Intel, and Nvidia, because you know what? Intel did this whole like dog and pony show, but kind of forgot Team Red. So what we want to do is we want to help you make a choice on where you may want to put your hard-earned cash when it comes to this holiday shopping season. Because you know what, honestly, we were surprised when we got to take a look at the Intel Arc Mobile GPUs, which you can see from our video right here. Now, now as an FYI, and I always like to be transparent, this was a sponsored video. But now that this video isn't sponsored, we can honestly say that we were impressed. But given how impressed we are, and now that it seems like a lot of the initial wave of software is in a good state, Intel is actually here to take a bite out of the largest and dare I say, most lucrative part of this market. Now, before we get into performance, let's get you up to speed on Intel Arc, given there's probably a lot you just don't know. So when considering Intel Arc, you have to be aware that this is the first iteration of desktop GPUs and mobile GPUs that Intel has done. I mean, outside of yes, they have done integrated graphics, but we're talking about the, the discrete graphics card. And given some of the reviews prior to our preview of the MSI laptop, which I was talking about earlier, I would say that most people weren't coming away very impressed. Now to be clear, it wasn't the hardware that folks were having the issue with. And heck, even Steve from Gamers Nexus said that he was impressed with the hardware, but it was the software and the drivers that was the majority of the issue. Now, given our limited time with the GPUs up to this point, it's fair to say that things are getting better. Now, like the competition, Intel has the same-ish stable of great technologies to help bolster your gaming experience and extended experiences. 
you get their version of DLSS, FSR and RSR technology called XESS, which is AI enhanced upscaling to help improve in performance on higher resolutions by dropping the resolution down a tier and then using AI to upscale. And if what we have seen from the results in Tomb Raider, it's very impressive and the performance gain is real. Just like AMD with the Adrenaline and Nvidia with GeForce Now, Intel also has a similar software suite called Intel Arc Control. Now both AMD and Intel do not require you to log in like Nvidia does which is super annoying, by the way, that you have to have an account. So I'm gonna start with that because that already gives them a big thumbs up in my book. But looking at the suite, you have all the same functionality to some degree, albeit a little less robust than both the AMD and Nvidia side. Now the software gets you the game ready drivers, which you know what, there's a hint there about drivers that you can take specifically for a particular game. So like if you have a game that doesn't give you an update, it'll let you know that if the update to the driver is actually updating that particular game, which is actually pretty cool, but we haven't seen it work yet. So I'm just, I'm kind of holding off my reservation on that. The thing it, it does do is it lets you do like performance settings per game. And what was interesting twist is that it also has like a full broadcast suite built in so you can directly stream your game to your favorite streaming platform. And it has things like, you know, like background blur and you know, some like, uh, like AI following and stuff like that. It, it was pretty basic, but it was still cool to see them kicking things off for streamers, etc. Now, one thing that Arc does have that both Nvidia and AMD are lacking at this price point is the support of the new AV1 codec, which is the replacement for HVEC. Now, Without some serious testing later, we can't tell you how comparable this is to like Nvidia's new Invec AV1 implementation, and if we do get the same awesome streaming decoding using the GPU. Now, one other thing I wanted to cover before we start talking about like hard performance numbers was also what was unique between two of the three competitors. Now, Intel's version is what's called Deep Link, and yes, I'll tell you about the AMD version here in a minute, but this is where you pair like an Intel GPU with other Intel hardware technologies like Intel Core processors and Intel Iris, which is their integrated graphics chip. Now this is similar to AMD's Advantage program. This is where both AMD have an, both AMD and Intel have an opportunity to do something truly magical given that they can rely on a unified ecosystem for the architecture for the CPU through to the GPU. And it looks like Intel is highlighting this already. So this is a good thing, honestly. And this is really cool for folks who are considering adopting this from an early platform standpoint, as it definitely could result in some of the biggest boosts. Practically speaking, this could be things where Intel is popping tasks, not just to your GPU, but also potentially to the included graphics, uh, integrated graphics card as well, or even the CPU, depending on the computational load. Similar to like Thread Director with Windows 11, where you get more frames and performance by splitting tasks to underutilized parts of the PC to help larger performance. That should get you up to speed on all things new from Intel and where things currently lie from a software offering and offering like, you know, bells and whistles offering. If you want to know more about the AMD side, you can watch our actually recently released video on the 6950 XT and it has a lot of the magic that AMD has in its camp. And, and believe it or not, it's actually pretty cool there too. And we were really impressed. In fact, it changed a lot of my perspective getting to do that video on what AMD has on its side. Let's set the stage. Let's set the stage for this competition. So before we do that, let me kind of tell you the price point for the A770 and the A750. So the Intel A770, which is Intel's current flagship, if we want to call it that flagship GPU, is going to be $329.99 at launch. And the A750 is going to be $289 at launch. Now, when we pop over and see other cards that you can get at that price point, we're looking at the NVIDIA RTX 3060, which, you know, honestly, isn't even at that price point. It's actually quite a bit higher, uh, quite a bit higher, but that's what ARC is going up against. And then there's the 6650 XT, which unlike the NVIDIA offering, you can actually get one for or below the price of an A770, but north of the price of an A750. So let's take a look right now at some of the performance numbers using what we have for the RX 3060, the RX 6650 using a Core i9-12900K bench system, and then the theoretical numbers that we got from Intel using their charts so we can make out a picture of what we have here. Now, there was no, none, no possible way to figure out what the heck uplift the A770 given Intel decidedly to pretty much omit 
The raw gaming numbers for their A770, unlike the awesome chart they provided for the A750. But what we can assume, based on what we have, is that the A770 will be some percentage higher than the A750. So you can look at these graphs and kind of determine where they are. So, and, and honestly, I'm gonna give you a, my best guess, but I'm gonna guess it's pretty accurate to where I'm pointing it at right now. So what I did is I chose a smattering of games based on Intel's numbers, so we can get a good picture of where all three of these GPU families probably sit. So let's kick it off. First off, we have Horizon Zero Dawn, graphical settings at 1440p, and high, basically high graphic settings all the way loaded. All of these are no DLSS, no FSR, no, FE, no XESS, just raw performance to get you an apples to apples comparison. For the RTX 3060, you're looking at 77 frames per second. For the 6650 XT, 83 FPS. And for the ARC A750, 70 FPS. Now, which this means like the A770 is probably gonna be right around the same frame rate as the 3060, if I was gonna guess. Now for Cyberpunk 2077, we have the 3060 at 43 FPS. Again, these are at 1440p in high graphical settings. We have the RX 6650 XT at 49 and the ARC A750 at 48. With the ARC A770 probably bringing the crown home with a solid north of 50 FPS performance. Now for Hitman 3, again high settings in 1440p, we have 74 FPS for the RTX 3060, 90 FPS for the 6650 XT, and finally 80 FPS for the A750, with my guess it being the A770 right around the mid to high 80s. Now Far Cry 6, also 1440p, high graphical settings, the RTX 3060 at 89 FPS, the 6650 at 113 FPS, and the A750 at 92 frames per second, with the A770 probably pushing close to or slightly above 100 frames per second. Now for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, same settings, as the rest, we have 72 FPS for the 3060, 76 FPS for the 6650, and 72 FPS for the A750, A750, and I would guess the A770 will be right around the same number as the 6650 XT. And finally, kicking off the performance smorgasbord, we have the Watch Dogs Legions, sitting at 1440p, again, high graphical settings, with 63 frames per second on the RTX 3060, 77 on the 6650, and finally 77 frames per second on the A750. Again, I think the ARC's A770 will be king here uh, when it's all said and done. Okay, so now that we have the numbers and we're gonna bring up this big chart right here, which is everything included, uh, here's what I think. I think I can see why Intel decided to only include the RTX 3060 because the AMD 6650 XT, kind of like the AMD 5800X3D, puts a bit of a wrench on the 13900K and even AMD's own 7000 series in like this whole value proposition for the Intel Arc. See, there's these charts that, that Intel showed for price per performance. What it did is it showed the uplift of the A7 series of cards um, versus the 3060. And it, and it does look real nice, Clark. But when you have that 6650 at the same price point as the Intel Arc handedly beating Nvidia, and in many cases also beating the high-end A770, the data kind of isn't so clear. Yes, we should wait for the full reviews, but I'm gonna guess that the numbers will actually be pretty close to what I'm showing here. And if I had to guess, maybe even a little worse for the Intel Arc, because you know what? Companies always wanna show things in the best light possible. Hey, what's up guys, Roby Tech here, and I had to interrupt this video, and I'm here actually on set with the Intel Creator Challenge, but um, for the Intel Arc side, because I just got finished with this video, and now that reviews are out, a couple things I wanted to update. Number one, it looks like I was right in terms of the review stuff. It looks like Radeon is still ahead, and Intel is second place uh, with um, uh, the NVIDIA RTX 3060 and, and 3000 series, but don't forget DX9. This is not gonna be a, a GPU for folks who are looking to do stuff that is older. It's more for modern day, for looking forward. So if you're gonna wanna get into all uh, classic games, Radeon may be a, a better option there as well. Um, super appreciate, you should definitely check out the reviews as well, but all of our data looks to be good and I still stand by a lot of the uh, my uh, overall thoughts that I had with this video. So wanted to interrupt this because reviews are live and make sure that you guys got this update. Now we're gonna get back to our regularly scheduled YouTube video. Does this mean, Roby, that you're down on Intel Arc? Absolutely not. I mean, for a first generation car to come out swinging like this and very clearly beat Team Green? I mean, that's no small feat. I will say in, in the competition of things as they stand right now, AMD is very hungry and those prices that they have are aggressive. And it's gonna be interesting to see where things end up as this new GPU war of three begins to kind of heat up. 
The one thing that Ark clearly does have over the other two in the battle as it's, as it's fighting is that it has AV1 support of which neither of the aging more budget friendly options from either Nvidia or AMD currently have. I also have to say that given the limited time with Intel Arc that we have seen, we are very impressed with XESS, which we need to do some more obviously deep diving in, but when we get our review cards, etc. But I mean, that I think is actually going to be a really strong feather in Intel's cap. I really do believe that Intel is going to get better with time, and given what I've seen in their mobile space, that's based on data, not just conjecture. But if I had to make a call today, it's looking pretty good for Team Red right now. The 6650FT is a clear winner here in just raw performance and the price is pretty hard to argue with from a price for performance standpoint. Second, I would have to give it to Team Blue. I really do think that Intel is playing to win here and it's hard to really justify paying nearly $100 more for what is almost clearly worse performance in a lot of titles. Now the stuff that we got to see from Shadow of the Tomb Raider is impressive and as we see more and more games implement XESS, we should see the performance gap increase until we see 4000 series offerings from Team Green and you know what, clearly what we're going to see from Team Red with uh, Ryzen 7000 series. With two teams hopefully beating down the door, Hopefully, that means that 4000 series, when we see the 4060, may actually even be at a better price because you got two teams basically making it really hard for them to justify that cost. I don't know, Nvidia can be crazy though. Now lastly, we have Team Green. Though they do lack in performance, they do have fantastic drivers. I mean, in DLSS, plus their drivers are just magical. They, they really do just work and they are always consistently updating. Now it's unfortunate that the new stuff from like DLSS 3 is gated by 4000 series, but Invec and a lot of their tech when it has to do with streaming, etc., is top notch and their veteran status makes them the leader that everyone is trying to take down. Though, you know what? Sometimes with little things like those misannouncements of 4070s, you know, makes it pretty easy to want to take them down. Now, lastly, and the one other thing that is probably worth remembering is that as you choose a GPU for your rig, especially if you're on a newer Intel platform like 12th gen, or even like you're going to do a 13th gen, like budget 13600K or whatever it, whatever it is, you may actually want to go Intel Arc for your GPU. And similarly, if you want, if you're on like an AMD platform, like Ryzen 5000 series, or even newer, you may want to go Team Red. One thing that both Intel and AMD are starting to flex is that synergy of having their full architecture of your system. And something tells me pairing a CPU and GPU in the future may be, <laughs> for lack of a better cliche, a match made in heaven. Okay, so hopefully this video, as we're coming into the ARC launch and now we're getting into the buying season, that this helps you make a much more informed decision about which GPU direction you want to go. We will know more obviously after the ARC launch and after the reviews and stuff, but I'm guessing given a lot of the forthcoming information that Intel has already shared, that we're pretty much know where the chips are gonna lie with Team Red being the strongest contender. Regardless though, I'm pretty excited because Intel Arc is no slouch and coming out of the gate where they are, let's hope they do what they really aim to do and that's bring down the cost of GPUs across the board with AMD and help make the GPUs at this price point way more competitive across the board. Are you listening, Nvidia? But you know what? It's not about what I think. Given the numbers I showed you, would you give an Intel Arc GPU a shot? What do you think about programs like Intel's Dink Link and AMD's Advantage program for CPU and GPU synergy? And regardless, are you just gonna wait for a 4060? And were you surprised that the AMD 6000 was actually higher? And do you know a lot about their whole Radeon software suite? I would love to know that and more down in the comments below. Now, you know why you're down there? You see, see over there in the corner? That nice like and subscribe, just, just hit that. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button because I'd love for you to not miss any more videos like this. Now, the other two is that if you're into wanting to see some of these built or see them live benchmark, you know that we have a, uh, you know, Roby Tech Live. It's like where we go and do all of these live stuff and you can guess absolutely we will be doing builds using the Arc A770, the 750, and of course, uh, the newer uh, NVIDIA and AMD GPU. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you're notified when we go and do awesome builds like that. Now, do you have questions about uh, Intel Arc or GPUs or any other tech related questions then head on over to discord.gg slash robytech where all of our tech and PC enthusiasts love to have these conversations whether it's an agreement or disagreement and help you make uh, informed decisions 
all day long. Now, do you wanna know when Intel Arc's available or maybe you're looking for cheap tech for your upcoming budget build? Then head on over to at Ruby Tech Deals on Twitter where we have our guy, Tom, our, our guy Tom scouring the internet for the best deals and also notifying you when the latest tech comes available. Also, check out robytech.com for latest information on our stream schedule. Uh, you can download our wallpapers. You can also buy our awesome build mats and all of our other awesome merch. Do you like awesome little, little, little videos like this? Then follow us on TikTok and make sure you don't miss this. Or maybe even, uh, maybe this fire build that we posted over on Instagram. We're at Robitech absolutely everywhere. So make sure you follow us along. And lastly, I really hope you enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks guys.